Well, we got a bombshell update in the Hunter Biden story. Stunning new details today emerging um, in the Hunter Biden story, which is not at all just about Hunter Biden, by the way. Although the mainstream media would have you believe it, it's just that son of Joe Biden. Don't pay attention to that. It's not it's not really that important, but it actually is a Joe Biden story, the president of the United States, and even pre-president of the United States when he was candidate Joe Biden. According to new emails released this week, President Joe Biden agreed to cover more than $800,000 in bills racked up by his son, including legal fees tied to the winding down of his controversial overseas business dealings. All of this came, of course, ahead of the 2020 election. And remember, of course, this was all censored on Twitter and social media at the time. You weren't allowed to talk about it. Yes, it's almost like the media treated Hunter Biden as if he were a minor child of a candidate, which the media normally leaves out. Like of a Chelsea any, Clinton. Right, of any political discussion. It was as if Hunter Biden was off, off limits. And look, I, I get it. He had just lost a brother to a brain tumor. The president was very sensitive about his children. Um, but the email that surfaced is very head scratching when you remember that any time President Biden was asked about Hunter on the campaign trail, he said, I never had any business dealings with my son. I really didn't know what he was up to. I did not get involved. Well, the email in question was from someone who was working as sort of a personal assistant capacity on behalf of Hunter Biden. Katie Dodge. Her name is Katie Dodge. And she sent it to these people. Hunter Biden was one recipient. Richard Ruffner was one of the aides for the pre vice president when he was in office and during his campaign. And Linda Shapiro. And he, she says, I spoke with Hunter today regarding these bills. It's my understanding that Hunt's dad will cover these bills in the short term as Hunter transitions his career. Um, so that's an interesting catchphrase. He's transitioning his career because then when you look at the spreadsheet, which I'm going to admit to you feels a little salacious to do it, to sort of look into these personal details of someone's life. Um, it is very head scratching, right? It well, is. Well, yeah. Look at this. I'm okay. We got uh, how many? How many trucks? So uh, his dad's going to cover a Ford Raptor truck payment for thirteen hundred dollars a month. Well, you you would think from reading this email that it's like okay, maybe these are some outstanding legal bills or some, but this is literally every expense for this person's life, including his kids' tuition and his kids' cell phone bills and his. Yeah, let's marriage look at this. alimony. Well, here they are on the screen, right? Naomi's rent and gym bill for four thousand dollars. Her Verizon bill for one hundred and eighty-two dollars. His life insurance policy for it. Yes. So dad's covering all of this out of what money, by the way? Um, the DC workspace that he pays for. Sloan's moving and storage for seven hundred and eighty bucks. I mean, the list is endless well, here. And, and it's interesting there if you look at this AT and T bills and and the assistant notes. There's eight phone lines here, but only three belong to your girls. So what are happening to the others? People just kept adding on to this account. So this is a these are monthly payments. Um, some of them are totals. Really interesting uh, is this: these three years of no four years of back taxes, 2015, 16, 17, and is 2018 listed there? No, um, but they're really high tax bills. So he had not been paying taxes. For all of this time, he owed that much in back taxes. And this line in here in red says, I haven't been able to pay this because of a shortage in the account balance. So this person had been working on an administrative capacity trying to keep up with all of these bills, but had not been able to. But his, Just, por and his Porsche payment, make sure you got the Porsche payment in there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, these, it, there's also reality. like boat, boat payment. There's a boat loan payment as well. So he's got a and boat, boat insurance. And boat insurance. And then there's also like Yale Club of NYC. So he's living this life of a, you know, wealthy diplomat, not diplomat, well, And all diplomat. of his kids, student, I mean, University of Penn, you know, in Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, $28,000 for kids' school expenses for tuition, Sidwell Academy. I mean, look at all of these student loans. Um, the, the list is endless here, right? And I mean, here's a, you know, here's a little bit deeper. This is Katie Dodge's other email here. Hello, Vice President team. I spoke with Hunter today regarding his bills. It's my understanding that Hunt's dad will cover these bills in short term as Hunter transitioned in his career. I have a list of the current bills of which I'm aware. I've attached the list below. I'm sure we will need to go over all of this to make a smooth transition. Many 
I can log into and change bank accounts, or I can give you the logins. At any rate, I wanted to get the ball rolling. Please let me know a convenient time for this phone call. That said, I'm traveling for the holiday weekend being tomorrow. I'll be back at my home office on Monday. Uh, also, she says, as is understandable, I won't be working for him as of the end of this month. Um, presumably because he has all of these outstanding expenses and since he's transitioning careers, he can't afford a personal assistant. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what I make of this. I don't know. Well, so Jen Psaki was asked about this at the White House yesterday. And uh, I love her. Like, just watch her face. She's like, I just, you know what? Why do I have to be answering these questions? Why am I not already over at MSNBC with my new job? I have to answer <laughs> these types of bullshit questions from reporters. And by the way, only, I mean... There's only like two reporters asking these very important questions because we weren't allowed to ask them before because they were censored. So here's Jen Psaki answering these questions. Maintain that he never spoke with his son about... Does the president still maintain that he never spoke with his son about his business dealings? Does he also say that he has never spoken to his son's business partners about his son's business dealings? Uh, he maintains uh, his same statements that he's made in the past. Uh, I would say, I know you're referring to uh, Waves records that were released more than 10 years ago. I really don't have uh, more detail or information on them. Okay, so let me Does just want to go deeper into this because that, this sort of, uh, well, we have, have no idea. We, you know, we have no idea. We, we're paying attention at all. So just bear in mind, these bills total more than $737,000, including $27,000 in legal fees for restructuring a joint venture with the Bank of China. We now know that Hunter Biden's business partner, Eric Shewan, was visiting the White House at least eight times in 2016. That brought the total number of visits during the Obama-Biden administration to 27 visits to the White House. So he went to the White House 27 times. And we're led to believe that Joe Biden knew nothing about it at all. He didn't have any interactions with him. He never saw him. He never shook his hand. He never talked to him. But paid then later related legal yeah. bills. Yeah. So nothing to see here. We're going to pay the bills. I don't know who these people are. It doesn't really matter. And didn't ask any questions. No, not at all. Meanwhile, I found this really, this whole part of this story really, really fascinating, which is Hunter Biden's Wikipedia page. I mean, let's be honest, Wikipedia continues to be a steaming pile of shit. It's terrible and continues to be a propaganda machine. Wikipedia loves to hide facts and peddle fake news. And we're now learning the lengths that Wikipedia will go to protect Hunter Biden and the White House doing the bidding of the liberal elite. So let me just take a look at this uh, piece here and pull up. This is a discussion on Hunter Biden's Wikipedia page or the Wikipedia page footnotes for Rosemont Seneca Partners, okay? The Wikipedia page for former Biden's investment firm, Hunter Biden's investment firm, Rosemont Seneca Partners. He was one of the three partners. It was removed because the editor said it was not notable. What? <laughs> it's like, this is not notable. We don't think that we should even have this as part of Hunter Biden's uh, account. And you can read the back and forth here and it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable the back and forth tit for tat as to why they think that this should not be involved and not notable. Now, why is this notable? Well, the investment firm is the subject of multiple probes in the Hunter Biden's overseas dealings that some have described as questionable. Wouldn't that rise to the level of being notable? Of course, you can read the whole debate back and forth for yourself and you can see the edits right on Wikipedia. Now, a Wikipedia editor, I love this, says, quote, this organization is only mentioned in connection with its famous founders, Hunter Biden and Christopher Heinz. Keeping it around, it says, would make it a magnet for conspiracy theories about Hunter Biden. Now, the co-founder of Wikipedia, um, uh, Larry Sanger, um, outlined because of this story, the co-founder of Wikipedia says that Wikipedia is no longer trustworthy and is now a propaganda website. He admits that Wikipedia is just as bad as Facebook run by Silicon Valley oligarchs with an agenda. Are any of you surprised by this? I just want you to remember this the next time you go to Wikipedia to get information. Unless it's something innocuous like what is fennel, you know, or, or what is... Uh, what is foot uh, to yard. Yeah, what is it, you know, how many feet in a yard, like that, you go to Wikipedia. But like, you want information about Hunter Biden? No, you're not going to see that. You want to go and like read Aaron Mate, who's an amazing journalist, read his Wikipedia page. It's laughable because you can see all of the propaganda that's shoved into that that Wikipedia page. Yes. It is a propaganda website run by billionaires. And you can yeah. go and just whitewash what Hunter Biden has done and you can remove his investment firm, which is notable and is also part of the story. But 
Wikipedia just decides that to delete it. That is unconscionable. Just delete it. We're not going to link it to Hunter Biden because we just decide we want to protect him. How you know? do you make uh, how do you make an <laughs> argument on behalf of that? Well, I, I mean, mean it's just, just crazy. How... And if you look at this conversation, you can see the person who's advocated for this to stay in the in the post just sort of gives up and he's like WTF is the point of this website if we actually don't fact check the content. This is an embarrassment, but um, who knows? I, well, I mean, there's obviously someone really powerful uh, who is trying to scrub this page for their own. Oh, absolutely. It is powerful. Dang. Max Blumenthal reported back when. So this was Andy Stone. You remember Andy Stone at Facebook. OK, he worked at Meta Facebook. And this is all back when this is look at the timestamp on this October 14th of 2020. This, of course, is when the New York Post story broke about the Hunter Biden laptop story, which, by the way, has been proven factually correct. And then only late, only recently, of course, the New York Times confirmed that it was true. And then suddenly now we can talk about it. But the New York Post had it first. Yes. And then when people would try to share it on Twitter, you would be blocked and you weren't able to share this article because it was deemed misinformation uh, by this guy, Andy Stone, one of the guys. This guy from Meta, from Facebook, he says, while, while I will intentionally not link to the New York Post, I want to be clear that this story is eligible to be fact-checked by Facebook's third-party fact-checking partners. Those it, exist. In the meantime, we are reducing its distribution on our platform. So that article, <laughs> the truth about Hunter Biden, is being reduced on our platform. Same thing happened at Twitter. And then, of course, Max Blumenthal on October 15th, 2020, says it seems relevant that one of Facebook's key third party fact checkers, the Atlantic Council, is funded by Burisma, the corrupt Ukrainian gas company that paid Hunter Biden $80,000 a month. Nothing to see here, guys. Just forget about it. Ignore it. Nothing to see at all. Now, on its face, though, are, are these charges so bad they're embarrassing, right? I wouldn't like to see that pu published about one of our children. Um, but is any of it on its face so bad? It's like we are not allowed to actually talk about that. What we're really talking about is not is not the weight of it, but rather whether or not what why why it's suppressed, right? And why so it's suppressed is because so there's two pieces of it here, and I think that what we're talking about right now is why it's suppressed, which seems obvious. But if we were actually allowed to openly discuss it on a one to ten scale. What would it measure, do you think? What would what measure? These pieces of news. The Hunter Biden laptop story, like, would it hit, would have hit harder if we were allowed to talk about it at the time? Does this, this piece of news hit hard now? Um, it seems it. that it's not hitting quite so hard, even though it's another data point. It's another, like, feather in the Yankee Doodle cap of Joe Biden said one thing on the campaign trail and it was false. It was a lie. I mean, you have NBC, which was sitting on that tape of President or uh, then candidate Trump on the bus with Billy Bush, waiting to release that just in time. We got our okay, our, but that you know, one hit a ten on a Richter scale when it hit. Oh, absolutely. This is not hitting a ten. It didn't well, hit a ten they, because it wasn't allowed to hit a ten. But the point is, as Sagar uh, from the Breaking Point show pointed out on Twitter today, he said. Uh, Vijaya Gade, the top censorship advocate at Twitter, who famously gaslit the world on Joe Rogan's podcast and censored the Hunter Biden laptop story, is very upset about the Elon Musk takeover, to which Elon Musk responded to Sagar's tweet, suspending the Twitter account of major news organization for publishing a truthful story was obviously incredibly inappropriate. Well said. Yeah. Thank you, Elon, the new owner of Twitter. <laughs> what were you going to say? Oh, I, was, I was just going to say that the that they the the damage was already done. They already suppressed it. So now, mm -hmm. like expecting expecting the 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 um I can't think of the the word right off. But when the media goes back and says, "Oh, we we corrected this story," a retraction, retraction. Yes, the the retraction isn't going to get the the news because it's already already in the minds of people. It's it's conspiracy theory. So they won't yeah, even yeah, and they'll the bury it. Yes. They'll, they'll bury it. I mean, it's the same thing what these major media organizations did about the the. Uh, the the election machines right and the the reason they're being sued for billions of dollars right for defamation right is be and then they were forced to like go on the air and issue like a 30 second little thing who cares like that didn't do anything the damage had already been done to those companies right the election companies uh, yes. the voting machines companies sure but like daddy paying a alimony payment of $28,000 a month is was never going to land 
in the same way as no, grab them by the that's keyword. That's not the story. The story is Ukraine. The story is Burisma. Sure. That's the real story. The, right? the story is China. The story, the story is, is getting, getting... Is that Hunter Biden has this is had the story. international news. This is the story, right? At the moment, there's a, provi a provisional agreement that the equity will, he will be distributed as follows. 20,000 to H. That'll go to the... Or 10,000 will go to the big guy. 10,000 is held for the big guy. That's 10% equity position held for the big guy. The big guy being Joe Biden. Like, that's the story. Who gives a rat's ass about his, his AT&T bill? Although it is interesting that there's eight phone lines and only three of them are being used. Like, who are the other five being used by? Right. These are all interesting. This is like palace intrigue stuff. But when, yes, but that's the, a good word for but it. But the money running to these people um, and what is being held from an equity position to curry favor with foreign governments. That is. Remember, and this is exactly what President Trump was impeached for. Like this was exactly what he was impeached for, for his phone calls uh, to the Ukrainian government. This is important. This is, you know, th this speaks to, uh, you know, people getting power inside of the White House and are able to buy access to yes. political leaders. Yes. That is incredible. I mean, to me, it's a, to me, it's a, if it was allowed to be published, if we were allowed to read the story at the time, it would have been earth shattering. Well, we're reading this story right now, and it is giving us evidence that President Biden has more um, fingers in the pot, you know, of other governments than we would have thought by way of his son, if not directly. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned, we've been blocked, we've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.